Hello, this is Dr. Marion Carroll at South Central Louisiana Technical College. Uh, we're on uh, Lecture 10. I can focus that. And this is 10 Part 2. Uh, we just finished talking about Boyle's Law and how pressure and volume are inversely proportional and there we go so in a system that changes I'm sorry it's P1V1 P2V2 um, at constant temperature we can predict if we know three of these values, what the fourth one will be. The same is true for Charles. However, Charles related volume with temperature at a constant pressure. Okay. Of course, what we mean by that is that the pressure stays the same regardless of whether temperature and volume are changing and the same uh, is true with Boyle's law these the pressure and volume will change but the temperature of the systems that we're looking at stays the same and this is important if, if these uh, laws are going to work um, so if I coordinate uh, axis again with volume on the y-axis temperature on the X and we have temperature going to the right increasing volume going up on the Y axis is increasing we learn that the temperature is directly proportional to the volume that means that as volume increases temperature increases proportionally so these are directly proportional And so if we have two systems in which uh, we have a volume one and um, we want, oh, well first, volume and temperature, since volume and temperature are directly proportional, a constant would be volume divided by temperature. Okay. V over T equals that constant. So if this constant is a value, uh, the volume and temperature will have to change proportionally to equal that value. But normally what we look at, like with Boyle, is uh, our two systems. V1, T1 equals V2 and T2. Alright, and if those two systems are, are being compared, we can determine what one of these values is if we know the other three. Okay, as an example, um, 200 kilo, uh, Kelvin uh, is the temperature of a gas. So I'll say gas at 200 degrees Kelvin is heated to 400 degrees Kelvin. The initial volume or original volume was equal to 3 liters. Alright, what's the new volume? Okay, so like regardless of how the problem is worded and of course it may be a little more challenging than this uh, we look for our V1 okay this is our NRT1 so V V1 here initial volume would be 3 liters our initial temperature is 200 degrees Kelvin we have a second temperature in here and 
then what is our new volume? Obviously, now this would be our V2. And so we want to solve for V2. We have to multiply both sides by T2. To give us our equation that we can now plug in our values 200, oh, 400 degrees Kelvin times 3 liters uh, divided by T1, which is 200 degrees Kelvin. And so if we multiply this out, that's 1200 over 200 which is equal to 600. And of course, not 606. Yep, 6. 6.0. And that's in liters. Okay. So, and we can see here again if our temperature goes from 200 to 400, our volume must have to go from 3 to 6 because it just doubled, like the temperature doubled, okay, because they're directly proportional. All right, we can combine these... Uh, these laws and that may become useful if we are looking at uh, a system in which we have um, current values let's move this out of the way of temperature uh, volume and pressure and we want to know what the new system values are. So the combined laws can be written in this way. P1, V1 divided by T1 equals P2, V2 divided by T2. So of course if we know uh, every value except one, we can solve for it. These would be the current values and these would be the new uh, system values. Uh, for instance, if I stated a problem, um, I have, uh, if I have um, four liters of a gas at STP. Okay, what's STP? Standard temperature and pressure. STP for temperature is 270 degrees, 73 degrees Kelvin. Standard pressure is one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury. All right. And the question is what is the uh, new volume? If um, the temperature is changed to 30 degrees Celsius, Okay, well, there's a, we have our equation, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Well, we want to make sure our units are all the same, so we'll need to convert the Celsius into Kelvin. And Kelvin is always... Uh, converted, or Celsius is always converted to Kelvin by simply adding 273. 
and so that would be 30 plus 273 is 303 degrees Kelvin. So we have our temperature. Uh, we have our volume, initial volume. And we have our initial temperature. This is T1 here. We have our initial pressure, it's V1 and V1. Our new temperature is here, T2. What's our uh, new volume? Let's see. Our new volume is, what's the volume of, here we got temperature, okay, I'm missing a value. I need my problem state, what my new value would be. Okay, I don't think I put that in there. So we got to have a new pressure, because what happened, we have T2. We have uh, V2 is what we want. What is the new value? That's V2. Okay. Um, and so we need a pressure. So let's say our pressure, the uh, new system pressure is... is two atmospheres. All right, that would be P2. Okay, so we have P1, V1, T1. We have V2 is what we want. We have T2 and we have P2. So we simply plug those in one atmosphere times 4 liters divided by 273 degrees Kelvin equals P2, 2 atmosphere, times uh, V2 is what we want, and T2 is 303. Okay, and so we multiply this out. And then um, isolate our V2. We find that our new volume is 2.2. Okay, so this is how we would work uh, a combined laws problem. This is our equation and remember you have to have at least five of these values in order to solve for one of them. Okay and so in the, in the question it might uh, have to be um, read carefully because sometimes the uh, values are not obvious when asked to give standard temperature and pressure as TP. You may not be given in parentheses what those are. You should know 273 what atmosphere standard temperature and pressure. But usually you'll be given all the values you need to solve the combination of the laws. All right, I'll, uh, we'll talk about partial pressure in a system in our next part, our last part on gases. Talk to you later.